Guitar practice session 10, 10, 24. These are fairly sloppy practice sessions where I practice whatever I think I need to be working on, then give a recap so you get an idea of what you're getting into. Hoping the practice sessions help me generate a routine, verbalize the things I'm trying to learn to get it in my mind a little bit better, possibly providing information to others, learning similar things, possibly also providing for feedback. If anybody sees a better way to try to learn the things I'm trying to learn, noting that I think the practice sessions or trying to present the information is a good way to learn the information so we will be providing these worksheets if you want to download the worksheets do your own practice sessions I think it's a useful tool to learn even if no one uh, is listening don't uh, worry about plagiarism or anything you can do whatever you want with uh, the worksheets they're going to be orientated possibly a little bit different than what you might be used to elsewhere in that I'm trying to make things as easy as possible for us to visualize the fretboard and try to maneuver around the fretboard visualizing things in such a way that we can make them movable on the fretboard and therefore i want to think about it from the perspective of us behind the guitar as though we imprinted the guitar on the screen which means that we have the low string or heavy string on top top to bottom left to right same orientation as though we were behind the guitar i'll also flip my guitar around so it looks like i'm left-handed so it will also be going in the same direction and you can kind of just envision everything in the same place hopefully lining them up on my guitar to the to the worksheet to what you're doing from behind <laughs> your guitar Okay, so we're this time we're going to go into the Dorian mode. We're finally moving to a new shape. This is the shape that I would call uh, shape uh, number five. We'll go into different naming con conventions for the shape. We're going to be start working on it with what I would call the mode number two, the Dorian mode. We'll talk about the absolute mode numbers, why those are important. We'll look at the relative positions. We'll look at the relative modes and the numbering will look at the uh, intervals and then I go through the different uh, positions within this shape breaking it out from a two string two string one string what I call the seven note house analogy and then the three string two string what I call the pentatonic hamburger uh, analogy and then before we continue forward we jump back to the three notes per string shape this time looking at the dorian position and we try to look at these shapes i'm thinking of them in three different ways to try to learn them by by shape so we can kind of copy and paste the shapes around as we go through the different modes and different scales and then also learn them by interval so that i can think of myself on any note and then build the scale around it by interval as well as what i call by formula meaning the whole whole half steps the whole steps and half steps where i can build the scale by going each step along it with the whole step and half step formula so then we look at the this scale and map it out in those three ways and try to see what are the pros and cons of looking at the scale in this way versus the the five ways that we break out the shape and then we also build chords i'm spending a little bit more time thinking about what chords we can construct and to do that we have to be able to convert the dorian relative positions possibly to the related major positions or interpret the related modes to know if we're going to make a major chord or a minor chord when we're playing in Dorian, which I think is a major obstacle for many people. I know it is for me and always it has been for me to think about I'm playing in a different mode. How do I know what chords I'm going to be constructing now that I can't just say that the one, four, five of say the related major scale or possibly the minor scale is either a major or minor chord, right? If I'm in Dorian, how do I know that I can build a major or minor chord? So we'll start to kind of get that down based on our convention of having the C as our major, not the key of C, but the major key, whatever that major key is, as our Rosetta Stone, in essence, our point of reference. Then we go back to the lean back shape, do a similar kind of thing. So now we're on the, the Dorian. So we'll build out the Dorian scale with a two note per string structure instead of a three note per string or instead of our five note breakout just to get an idea of different ways that we can construct the same uh, 
intervals or the same scales, and then we'll do our three methods of looking at it. We'll, we'll take a look at it by interval, by formula, and uh, by shape. And then we'll take a look at how to construct a different uh, chords from that shape. And then finally, we go back to the C again. I tell a little joke uh, by the time we go into here, I think. This is where I tell the joke. So you could skip forward from that if, you're, if you don't like the jokes. <laughs> and then we'll finally then go from this D to this D. We'll analyze this position from formula, from intervals, from position. And then we'll take a look in more detail each of uh, the intervals in this position. And as we do so, we will try to convert each relative position in the Dorian to the related modes that are basically based on the relative positions for the major scale, locate them in our shape so that we can see this shape in both the seven note house analogy and five note pentatonic analogy and locate where each of the modes are in in the shape. And we'll spend a little bit more time thinking about chord constructions for each of the notes, not just for the lean forward chords, but also for, for multiple ways we can construct the chord. Because you'll note if I was on like this C, I could try to lean forward and construct a note down this way or down this way. Or I could think about up here, right? Could I build a chord going up this way? So we'll start to think about based on our interval conventions and based on the idea that we know what mode we're in, how we can build chords off of any note within the scale that we have and not just one way to build it, but multiple ways to build it. And we'll start to touch in the, on the idea of building more than a three note triad, because if I wanted to, to add the seven or add the nine or whatever, we can go beyond that, which we would need to know more than just the three note triad, the relative positions on the major scale, but actually we need to know the mode that it's in because that's gonna tell us all of the intervals, not just whether the third is major or minor. So we start to touch in on that, but I get tired and I make some errors. So uh, uh, bear with me towards the end of that, but maybe we'll do more of that tomorrow. Finally, moving on to a new shape, what I would call shape number five, looking at what I would call mode number two, that being the Dorian mode, remembering that we're gonna be using absolute mode numbers that are based on the major scale, otherwise known as the Ionian mode. Our main objective here being to analyze the fretboard in such a way that we can move around and shift positions on it as easy as possible. Therefore, I'm not spending so much time learning and memorizing all of the relative positions in terms of actual notes in each of the modes, such as saying the Dorian mode for the key of D has a D and then the two is an E and then the three is an F and so on and so forth. But rather, I would like to understand the relative positions because that will allow me to easily move through the modes a little bit more easily. So what do I mean by having absolute mode numbers? Remember, if I go back to the major scale up here, we would have the relative positions one through seven. Here are the notes for those relative positions, which are gonna be all the notes except for the sharps and flats because we're working in the key of C and the related modes. And then if I look at the, at the mode numbering system, I'm gonna be numbering the modes based on the relative positions to the major scale, which is just a convention, but helps to orientate ourselves like trying to just pick a point in space and time for us to orientate ourselves and basically measure things from that point. It's kind of like our Rosetta Stone, the thing that we're gonna be uh, comparing to. Now, most of the time when people start learning the major scale, we start to say, how is this useful? Well, I know the notes, if I know the relative positions in the major scale, I can then learn how I can convert those into chords. Most people then learn that the one, four, five are gonna be major chords and the two, three, and six are gonna be minor chords, which are indicated here by the upper and lower case Roman uh, numerals. The problem is, of course, that when I move to the Dorian mode, then I have a whole nother set of relative positions. So then when I try to convert from the notes, they're all the same notes, but now they're in a different order and I don't know which notes now to be, to be playing a major chord and a minor chord uh, within. And beyond that, I don't know where I can add like a, a major seven or a minor seven, for example, 
because just knowing the three note chord, major or minor, only really tells me that it's got a major or minor third uh, within it. So, so what we would like to do beyond that, the idea would be that I'm gonna label each of the modes because the modes are actually the thing that will tell me a more, con they tell me more detail about what kind of chords I can construct in each of those positions. And if I can say that the, the, if I'm in the Dorian and I see the first of the, of the Dorian and I know that Dorian is absolute mode number two, I know the relative position to the major scale and I know because it's a two that I would be playing a minor chord. And beyond that, if I know it's the Dorian mode, I can look at all the relative positions on the Dorian mode to it. If I know that the, the second of the Dorian mode is actually the Phrygian or it's the third of the major scale, that allows me to say, well, the third of the major scale, I know that's a minor chord. I can construct a minor chord from it. Beyond that, I know it's the Phrygian. If I can determine it's the Phrygian, that allows me to, to build all of the intervals that are in the Phrygian mode based now on the E instead of on the D. So that's kind of the power of it. And also, I'd like to be able to identify all of the shapes, no matter what, <clears throat> no matter what key I'm in, in terms of relative position. So whether I'm in a, a D Dorian or an E Dorian or whatever, the relative positions of the shapes will be the same, even though the, the notes will be different because it would be just like copying and pasting something in an Excel worksheet. All the, all the relative positions will move in the, same, in the same way relative to each other. So that's why I, don't, I want to spend more of our time here. I'm spending more of my time, and this is what I'm doing, and you know you could fault you could do that if that sounds interesting. Trying to think about things that are going to be uh, maneuverable and memorizing it in such a way that I can move maneuver the shapes ar around the fretboard. And if you can learn, if you can memorize the notes in each of the keys as well, great. But 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 I'm just trying to trying to that's my basic objective. Okay, so then we have the relative positions, the first through the seventh. We've got uh, the modes. Uh, here that we're going to learn the modes as we go through. We've got the intervals. Remembering that the intervals, the, the way I would like to memorize the intervals is once again, we've got our major intervals. That's the first one we would probably want to remember because the intervals were basically based on the major scale. Compare that then to the major, the, the main minor, which is the Aeolian mode, the minor scale. And then we have to learn those intervals, which are basically all the same ones, except all of the majors get converted to minors, except for the minor second, the, P, the, the perfects stay the same. And then we can compare the major modes to the major modes and the minors to the minor. So in other words, this is a Dorian. What I'd like to do is use our Rosetta Stone, which is gonna be the key of C to, to learn the intervals and then learn the Aeolian intervals, which are going to be, uh, the, the minor scale, and then we can compare the minor modes, such as the Dorian, to the minor to the minor intervals, which will only have one interval difference, which is this one. The six has a has a major six instead of a minor six, and uh, the major we can compare the major modes to the major uh, to the major Ionian mode or major scale. So so, in terms of the intervals then, what do we have for the intervals? If I compare it to the minor key, uh, we can say that we have a perfect first, which is always the case. We have a two note away major second, which is still the case even in the relative minor mode of Aeolian, even though it's a minor mode. We have a three note away minor third. It's the third, by the way, because it's the third relative position. It's three notes away because it's it's a distance of three notes from the root, which in this case happens to be a D, and that by definition is a minor third. A minor third is three notes away. This one is a perfect fourth. A fourth, because it's the position here, perfect fourth means it's five notes away from the root, in this case the D. We have a seven note away perfect fifth. The, f the five is because it's the fifth position. Seven notes away means it's seven notes away from the root, from the, from the, D over here, and and that's the same in the perfects are the same in the major and the minor, and then we've got a nine note away major six. This is the one that's different in the minor to the major. This one would normally be a minor six, eight note away minor six, 
Now it's a nine node away major six. That's the difference from the Dorian to the other minor mode of the, of the Aeolian. And it's nine notes away. And then we've got a normal seven note away, uh, I'm sorry, 10 note away minor seven. So those are gonna be the, the intervals. Once we go through these shapes, I'd like to learn these three different ways. I'm kind of trying to solidify in my mind more. One is gonna be, we, we learn it just by shape. So I can define this shape as what I call shape number five. Uh, I'll give it other names shortly. But then we can also define it by interval, meaning I go from the start of my, my uh, shape from whatever I'm working on, in this case, the Dorian, and then I count up my intervals and I'll end up with the shape. So I can build the shape by interval. And then I can also do it by, by formula, what I might call formula, whole steps and half steps, meaning like the majors, you know, whole, 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 half, whole, 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 half as we move through. So I'm gonna to try to look at it basically those three ways uh, as we, that's what I'm trying to get in my mind. And then as we do this, we're gonna call this what I call position number uh, five. So notice there's only five positions. We went up to four, which was up here. And actually the, the starting position in open position when you're playing in the key of C is what I would call position four, or you might call it a C position. And then C, A, would be the A position next in a caged system. So when I play the related major, which is the C here, I'm playing and I make a bar chord from that C, it's an A shape. So you might call this from a caged system, an, an A shape. You might also call it based on the first note in the shape. If you played through on that first note, you'd be playing a mixolydian uh, shape. So you might call it that, although we're not gonna be playing from the first shape, we're gonna be playing from here, that's why we're going to be playing the key of Dorian, even though we're inside what you might call like a mixolydian shape if you were to play around the first note of the shape. Okay, and then, and then the next thing we want to learn is to be breaking out within these shapes to smaller chunks that are more memorizable. Because remember, there's three notes in each of the in each position about two or three on each finger, and we can only memorize like seven things at a time. So the fact that we're chunking it down to groups of three might mean we can remember more than just two strings, but still we have to break it down more, most likely more than all of this shape. We can memorize from top to bottom that entire shape, but it's gonna be more difficult for us to start in the middle of that shape and kind of orientate ourselves to where we're at. So the guitar I'm saying is a five string instrument plus an extra E. So, so if I think about five strings, I can break it out. The two common ways to break it out is a two string, two string, one string breakout, which is what I call the house analogy, where we have the double, the, the house double stop. This is what I'm calling the house double stop. And then we've got the double stop house, which would be the double stop house here, but it got shifted up because of the fault line that we'll have to compensate for. And then we've got the two note uh, per string uh, hamburger shape which is going to be here so i had my i had my pentatonic thing in the wrong spot and then and then if i see it if and so so that's one way that we can break it out so as i break it out that way what i want to be learning is what are the relative positions in the shape possibly starting with this little box here because that's easy to find not according to the note and not even according to maybe the positions, the first, second to the third, but related to the modes, because the modes will be the same. All the related modes will be the same. So I can say, well, the Dorian, where does the Dorian doesn't live in the house? The Dorian's over here. The house has the major over here. Uh, the house has the, the, the Locrian behind it, the Phrygian under that. Uh, and the Lydian over here. So we'll get into that in more detail. But if I wanted to go from a four note, uh, a seven note scale to a five note pentatonic, I would remove the Locrian and the Lydian, these corners. The other way people often break out the, this, the strings is to a three string, two string breakout, which means that's gonna be the pentatonic breakout, which I call the hamburger and barbell shape, which you could see here's the barbell where we're at the end of the barbell, where we have the two heavy hitters on the minor two heavy hitters on the on the major 
and then you've got in the middle, those are the notes that would have to be added going from a five note pentatonic to a uh, to, to the seven note scale. And then we have the hamburger, which might be more easy to see because it's broken up here between the two halves. So if I put it out here, it might be easier to see like maybe right here. So we'll go boom from here to here. And so that's gonna be what I would call the hamburger shape. And we would have to add the two extra notes, which I imagine putting a hat on the hamburger. There's the Lydian. And then over here is, uh, is the Locrian modes. All right, so we'll go into, we'll go in here and then next time, and we'll soon, we're gonna go in here and go through from this D to this D and think about each of the intervals and we'll think about where each of the modes live and how I can convert from the relative position one in Dorian and all of the relative positions to the relative modes, which you'll remember are basically based on the relative positions of the major scale. I wanna make that conversion as quickly as I can. Why? Because again, that, t that orientates me within my position more clearly. And because I know the Rosetta Stone of the C, I can then know what kind of chords I can play based on the relative positions to the C scale. So that's, that's the way I'm thinking it currently. But before we do that, uh, let's go into let's go into our three notes. So so we're going to be in this box right now. But let's just remember that we don't have to just be in this box. Let's just think about some other ways that we can make the scale. Just to see that this is a convention. It's still just a a fretboard. There's many different ways that we can uh, basically see it. So let's go to the three note one. So this is gonna be my three note per string. And now I move, so before we were looking on the C up here, and now I'm gonna be looking on uh, the Dorian. So the interesting thing with this three note per string shape is one of the advantages is that, is that every, every note on the top string, which is like a piano, it's laid out like a piano, so it's kind of easy to find on the top string, will then, give, will then have its own scale from that note. Whereas when we have the five note pentatonic, we only have five shapes, but we have seven modes. Therefore, we're gonna have uh, some modes that have, some shapes are gonna have multiple modes as their main shape to play them in. Here, we're always, this shape is always gonna be starting on whatever note we are in the mode, and it's always gonna be leaning forward. I'm always thinking of it as leaning forward, because just the way the shape is, it's gonna force us to move this way diagonally. Now the fact that it moves diagonally up the, up the guitar is kind of, kind of a problem, kind of a mess because it's a little bit harder to orientate. So there's pros and cons of it, but the fact that you always start on one shape and you're always leaning forward is, makes it easy for us to locate the starting point, which is nice. Notice that when we go to the lean back shape, this is what I would call the two note per string scale shape, it's the opposite. It still has the nice, it's leaning backwards, but it still has that nice convention of us basically starting on whatever note we are in, in the scale on the top string or wherever we're starting it, that will always be the related mode. So if I'm on this D, if I'm on the second note of related to the major scale, mode number two, that's, that's where the shape will start. But this time it'll always lean backwards do the two to the fact that we're doing a two note per string shape. So let's just get an idea of that and this will help us to solidify the rules that are basically being used in all of our different conventions. We have the convention to try to keep our fingers, our main goal and the five shapes is to keep our fingers within four to five frets. Our main, our main goal in the three note per string shape is to try to play an even amount of notes on each of the strings to make it possibly more symmetrical and it possibly also can help us locate where we are a little bit more easily and the main goal for the two note per string is much the same we want to keep it kind of symmetrical so we have the two notes per string and we can easily visualize those two notes because that happens to end up in every other note being being on the next string down which actually creates a nice arpeggio of the, of, the, of the chords, which is just naturally done due to the way the shape is structured, which I think is actually 
quite useful. So in any case, so then if we start on this D, uh, let's think about this, this D and compare it. Uh, so there's three ways we can think about this. We want to think about it in terms of, once again, the, the, en the shape, the interval, and then, and then what I call the formula, meaning whole, st whole steps and half steps. So if I look at the shape of this, what we, what we start off with is at, we ended off last time, by the way, Here's the C where we've got the, this is what the middle, it starts in the middle of what I call the three pillar shape. And then it goes to, let's just analyze this one one more time. You've got, you've got the middle of the three pillar shape and then it goes into what I call the house double stop. So there's our good old house. It's still there even though we're doing three notes per string. And then it goes into the double stop house. Notice what we're starting on is that same thing because I'm saying there's two E strings, so I'm going to bring that up to the top. And if I was continuing in the key of C, we're now on the top of what I would call the three pillars. And then now we're back to the starting point. So this is the starting point that we've shifted through from this point. So if I think of it like we're still playing all the way through the key of C, multiple octaves, right? I go one octave up here, two octaves up here, and then it went around the top. And then, and then I play out to the next, uh, to do, 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 the next octave is way up here because I'm repeating this one, and then I went from a high down to a low, so so octaves aren't exactly working in that case, but the pattern works, right? So then it goes down, and then we go down to here. Uh, but remember, the idea here is that there's actually this pattern right here has seven, has has three strings in it. It actually starts at the G. It's three pillars. So we have three, four, five, six, seven strings in essence that we're rolling through. There's only five strings plus a repeated E on the fretboard. So we don't see the pattern actually repeat until we get down here all the way through a whole pattern. So keeping that in mind, that means that I can look at this pattern as either a continuation of the C major, or I can say, look, I'm gonna start on the D, just like I can in the middle of any pattern, and say, now I'm gonna see it as I'm starting on the D, which is the second note related to the C major, therefore I'm gonna be playing in the Dorian if I think about that note as my root. Okay, so if I think about that note as my root, then I have the bottom of what I call the, the double stop house shape, and then it leads into the three pillars. So here's our three pillar shape, and then it goes to the box double stop shape. And then if this moved up, it would move up to the top, boom, boom, then it starts right here. So now, so now we're at, once again, the bottom of the box double stop, and then it goes to the double stop uh, box, and there we are repeating. It doesn't repeat till we get down to here, right? So it would play all the way through again. But if I'm playing from top to bottom from this D, we have then this, what I call the, the bottom of the, bo of the double stop box, the three pillars then. And notice it shifts up two times here because when I get to the bottom of this double stop box, it shifts up naturally. And now we also have the kink in the tuning or the fault line. So it moves all the way up to this B. Right, okay, so that so that's gonna be the shape that will that we can learn it in. Let's learn it now by the intervals. So let's just go through these intervals and say, okay, the Dorian has a two note away major second. So that would be the same whether I would be in this shape, which I would call this shape would be the, like uh, the Dorian shape, or you might call it shape number three, or you might call it like a D shape from the caged system. It would be the same under that and the three note per string shape. But then when I go to the third, so if I go to the third, we're going out here. I had to move that shape out. That would also be the same. That'd be the minor third under both of those shapes because it doesn't go past the four the four note span i didn't have to reach to a fifth fret and that's why a fifth fret three notes but five frets so it's the same under both methods 
And then I go back to here, which is going to be the five note away perfect fourth, the same under both shapes. And then we're going to go to this one, which is going to be a seven note away perfect fifth, same under both shapes. But here's where it gets messy because now we're in the three pillars shape, which means that I'm going to, if I reach out here, I'm going past, I'm going past the idea of only going four frets out. Therefore, if I was in, in the five shape fretboard shapes, I would have to go back here, but instead I'm going to reach out to this one. So we're going to reach out here. So that's useful to note. If I'm playing the key of Dorian, we might still think of ourselves as being in, in this shape, shape number three, right? So it'd be, but it might be useful to note, but that, that once I get to this little bit right here, I could reach out here. and just add that extension into the shape I'm working on if I can visualize and say, hey, wait, where's the three pillars in relation to this shape that I'm in? And that'll give me another option, right? I can be like, okay, that'll give me repeated notes. I'll be replaying the same note. If I went from here back to there, you might say, why would I do that? I could play it back here. Well, because to play it back there, you, you have to shift your hand back, right? So I'd have to go like back here to, to shift my hand back. Whereas if I was right here, it's easier, it's easier to play, right? So, so if I do the lean forward shape, I don't have to go back to these two notes. I can just move my, this bar all the way down and then I can just reach up to those notes up here. So it, that's some, that's pretty practical. So then, so then we've, we've got, anyways, <laughs> where was I? I'm on the A, you're just rambling. You don't even know what you're talking about. I know what I'm talking about. One, <laughs> here we go. And then we're gonna go to, I was on, now I forgot where I was. Anyways, I was on the A and then a B. So the B would be the nine note away major six from the D. And then back to, and then to the C, which would be a 10 note away, major seven. And then to the octave. Okay, so that's interesting. All right, and then if I did the whole steps and half steps, it would be one is a whole step uh, to the second, and then the second is a half step to the third. Now notice if I thought about the, the like five note pentatonic, well, one is a, what is a half step to the third, the five note pentatonic, the notes that are removed are the Lydian and the Locrian. So, so notice that right here, this F is the Lydian. That's the one that would be removed. I also know it would be removed because if I see the full box, it's at the bottom of the box. So that's also where the whole steps and half steps are on, the one that goes into the Lydian. So there's our half step. And so when I'm in Dorian, I'm at one, two, three, between two and three is a half step. And then we go from three to four is a whole step, from four to five is a whole step, and then from five to six, now I'm doing a whole step, but I'm moving out here, and then from six to seven is a half step. Now that's a little bit wonky for a lot of, for me at least right now, because I don't usually, I'm not always thinking in terms of these wider shapes. So when I go from here to here, it looks like a pinky to pointer shape to me, which I tend to think is like a whole step, but it's actually a half step because I'm going five frets out instead of four. Usually the pinky to pointer is four frets out, right? And then it would be a whole step, but now I'm going five frets out, pinky to pointer with a longer reach, that's gonna be a half step. I can also see it's a half step because the C would be right there. And now I'm bringing uh, the C back here. So we've got a half step uh, going to the C. And so that would be the seven and then a whole step going from seven to eight. Okay, 
So within this shape, the thing to keep in mind for me that's a little wonky is that when I'm in the other shape, when I'm in when I'm in the five shapes, it's the half steps are always in the box. I can always see the box, and that's where the half step is. But in these three note shapes, notice the box is being split up sometimes. So I have to recognize that the half step is going to be related to the box, but I'm going from here to here, pinky to pointer, from a long five stretch span back, back, and that's going to be where my half step is on those longer shapes. Okay, so we, we've done it that way, and then by shape. So the other thing I just want to look at is that I can build chords on each of these shapes now, and so let's just think of it. Now, this shape is a, is a great one because it has in the top two strings it's going to have all of the all of the notes except one in the shape i've got i've got six notes one two three four five six and i'm just missing uh this one here which is the seven which could be more important in a dorian than it would be in the major how can i convert these then to to chords well i can say well the d it's a dorian i know the dorian's a minor mode so, so, and I also know it's the second of the major scale. So if I know the Dorian is the second of the major scale, I know it's, it's, the, it's the minor mode. So I can say, okay, I can build a lean for, what I would call a lean forward chord, uh, which would be this bar chord, which would be like an E-shaped bar chord. So I have that. And then, and then if I go to the next note of the Dorian, we've got then the second of the Dorian is how, how do I know what chord I would play off of that one? Well, I could say, I could use my little math here. I can say, well, the second of the Dorian is one note away from the first of the related major, which is, and so I can say two minus one is one plus two for this relative position uh, gives me a relative position three. So that three means it's relative position three on the major which means, and the two, three, six are the ones that we would make a minor chord from. So I can say, well, that's going to be a minor chord. Beyond that, it's the Phrygian. So I know I can, I can also think about it in terms of adding the distinct Phrygian note, which is a minor second. But that would be leaning forward like that. And I'm, I'm running out of space on the acoustic here, but, but that would be that one. And then if I go to the next one, I could say, okay, then then the third of the Dorian is actually the mode number two minus one is one plus three, otherwise known as the fourth of the related major. The one, four, five would build major chords from. Therefore, I know I would build a major chord from it. Beyond that, it's the Lydian, and the Lydian has a distinctive augmented fourth if I wanted to get more detailed. But I could just say, okay, that's going to be a major chord, which is really hard to reach. <laughs> something like that and then and then I can say okay let's go to the fourth of the Dorian which is going to be here and the fourth of the Dorian what's the relative position uh, to the major scale it's going to be two minus one is one plus four or five and I know that the one four five of the major scale I would make a major chord from and so and I also know it's mixolydian which is going to have that distinctive minor seven so that would be an A shape uh, chord because it's a major chord from there on the bar chord. And then if I go to the next one, I can say, okay, what's going to be the, uh, the fifth of the Dorian is going to be here. And what, what chord would I make? Well, Dorian is two minus one is one plus five would give me the sixth mode. And I know the sixth of the related major would be a minor chord because the two, three, six would build minor chords. Beyond that, I know it's the main minor or Aeolian. So I can build like a, it would be an A shaped bar chord. And then I can say, okay, then let's go to the sixth of the Dorian. The sixth of the Dorian is gonna be this B. What would I build on it? I can't really reach it, but it would be two minus one is one plus six would be seven. That would be the Locrian which has the, so, so, so if it was the seventh of the relative major, I know that that would be the funny diminished one, which is the Locrian. And that has that, so I can just add that. 
distinctive uh, uh, flat fifth. And then if I go to the seven, the seven is going to be on the C down here. And I can say, all right, well, what's the, the seven of the Dorian is related to the Ionian because it's two minus one is one plus seven is eight minus only seven modes means it's the one of the relative major which means of course the one four five would be major chord constructions so you and and i know it's also the major scale so that would be like a d shape you can see it here or you can make this little d up here or you could try to finger the whole thing but that's difficult for me to do let's do a lean back shape what if i what if i did it this way and said i could lean it back this way and just look at look at these three so if i can say okay well it's a d uh, and, and it's a dorian that means it's a minor mode so that means if i lean it back i'm going to have the third which isn't here because it's a minor third will be back here and then the fifth will be here so i can still use that d to tell me in the shape in in my scale shape but then build something that's not within the shape exactly i'm leaning outside of the shape but i know it's still built off of it it's still in the key because i'm i'm doing i'm building a one three five off of it and then if i go to the to the e i know that the e once again the second of the dorian is two minus one plus two the Dorian is two minus one is one plus the second, which is two, gives me mode number three or relative position three to the major, which I know is a minor chord construction because uh, the two, three, six are minor. And beyond that, I know it's the Phrygian mode. So I then can go over here and say, okay, that's the Phrygian. And so that's gonna be a minor chord construction. One, three, five, one, three, five. And then I can go to the F and say, all right, the F, the third of the Dorian, Dorian is two, minus one is one, plus three gives me four. The fourth of the relative major would have a major chord construction because the one, four, five are major chord constructions. And beyond that, I know that the fourth is the Lydian, which is a distinctive augmented fourth. So now I have a major, which means the third got shifted up here. The fifth is still the same when we build our triad off of it. So now, boom, boom, boom. Oh, wait a second, it's wrong. Right here. Is that where I'm at? <laughs> I think that's right. All right, and then, and so then, we can go to the, we can go to the fourth of the Dorian, which is going to be this G. And so it'll say G, do, do, do. And the fourth of the Dorian is Dorian is two minus one is one plus four is five. I know the fifth of the relative major would build a major chord on it because the one, four, five would build major chords. Beyond that, I know it's the Mixolydian, which has a distinctive 10 note away minor seven, right? So I can say, okay, this is gonna be a major. This is like a C shape from a cage system. And then I can go to the fifth of the Dorian. And I know that the fifth of the Dorian is two minus one is one plus five, five, six, seven. So this is gonna be, wait a sec, Dorian is, <laughs> Dorian is two minus one is one plus five is six. And I know the sixth of the relative major would have a minor chord construction because the two, three, six are minor and the sixth is actually the Aeolian mode. So I can build a minor chord construction, which has a minor third on the lean back, a C minor shape, you might call it, from a cage system perspective. And then we've got then this one, which is going to be the sixth of the Dorian. So the sixth of the Dorian, Dorian is mode number two, minus one is one, plus six gives me seven, would be seventh of the relative major, which means it would be that funny one that has the, that has the diminished which is the Locrian mode. And that that is the same shape, it's hard to reach here. It's not too bad to reach if it wasn't for this, for the no cutout here, but right, it has the, 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 the minor third, but then it has the fifth that's shifted back uh, because it's a flat fifth. And then we've got then the seventh. So the seventh, finally, of mode number two, Dorian is 
2 minus 1 is 1, plus 7 is 8, only 7 modes, so minus 7 uh, is 1, gives me the, gives me the major scale. And now we've got the 1, we've got the 3, but the 5, instead of it being back here, has been shifted up. It's up, it's up here uh, because of the kink in the tuning or the fault line. All right, let's do the same thing on the two note per string just to get an idea of that. Oh, by the way, I was also kind of thinking like if you were on, if you're on the top two strings, you can always do the power chords, right? Except on, except on the, on the Locrian, because then you'd have, which most people stay away from anyways, but then you'd have the, 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 the flat fifth. Uh, so that's nice. And, but if you get down to these strings down here, notice the shapes that I can make. I can go, I can go what I call a lean back shape and a lean forward shape, bar shapes versus G shapes if it was at the top string or C shapes down here from a caged system. But if I'm on any other string, I can also start to move upwards, right? So if I was right here, I could start thinking, okay, what if, what if I moved up this way, moved up this way, or what if I made this note like the middle note, right? So it gets a little bit more wonky. So over here, for example, like on this G, you, you might start saying, well, what if I make that like the middle note? Because I know above it, that note above it, if I went from the top note down to the bottom note would be a fourth, and therefore the, the inverse would be a fifth. So if I see that as my, so just to put these, these intervals into action, if I see that as my root, above it would be the fifth, all I need is a third to make that into a triad, an inverted triad. So that's gonna be right here, right? So that's gonna be, so then that's another way I can see these shapes. And that's kind of useful if you're kind of playing, you can play those shapes all the way along the top of the guitar. You, that's also a, like a C shape because you could go boom, boom, you know, that C, like the C would be like this, but you can grab the top one. But sometimes it's useful just to play these three and then mute the rest maybe with your, like your pinky. And just play the heavy. But I have to be able to see that I'm seeing the G as my center point. And, and by the way, if I, if I continue with that, that was the G, and let's go then to the A, which is the fifth. So notice what happens here, that the, the fifth is a minor chord construction. So, so what do we end up with? We end up with boom, boom, boom. So, so now we've got then on, I'm sorry, the fifth, wait a sec, what happened here? I'm on the A, right? The A goes duh, duh, and then the third is down here. So that gives me basically my lean back shape. So that's going to be, sorry, what am I doing? It's going to be here. <laughs> so now we've got, well, I'm thinking about that as the root. Above it is the fifth, right? Above it is the fifth. And then the third is back here. So I'm thinking about the A as the root. So now I can play those three, the top of those three. And then if I went to, to the B out here, I'm thinking about it as, well, that, Th that would be the Locrian, so that's where it's going to get a little bit wonky. But you could do a similar thing over here if I went down to this C. The C is, of course, a major chord construction. I know above it, I'm going to have the fifth, right? And then below it, then I'm going to have uh, the third. So if I look at that, I'm going to say, okay, then the C is going to be where's do, 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 right here and then boom boom and and you can see that that's basically like the bar shape right this is my bar chord so do, do, if I was going bar or boom but then if I just want to play those three notes I can play it like that so when you start to do like if you start to kind of map this out this way what you'll realize is is that you can deconstruct obviously your bar chord into three note chunks which is actually quite useful because then you don't have to play the full bar chord. Oftentimes you don't want to play the whole bar chord, it's too heavy. You just want, you know, three notes in there and whatnot, but they'll be inverted. So maybe 
I play with that like more as we go. But let's go to the lean back shape. So now I'm on the D Dorian on the lean back shape. So so this is the two note per string shape. So so let's think about this in our three different ways. We're going to start on the D. So if I start on the D and I'm thinking of it as as the Dorian mode or the the notes relative to the to the major key, if the C was the major, then D is going to be the second and if I play around the D or start on it with these shapes, then I'll be playing within the Dorian. And so so one way to see this shape is to say that I could just play the shape, which is just combining together basically the two the the two lean back shapes. So if I see that as my minor shape, I go, that's my minor shape like this. So there's the one, there's the three, and there's the five. Then then and then I just combine that with the next shape up, which is an E which is also a minor shape, one, three, five. So that would be the one, three, five, boom, boom, boom. Then that's basically just building my, my uh, scale, which makes sense because what this is doing, if it's two notes per string, the way we build a chord is we take every other note in the scale, which means if there's only, if we're doing a pattern that only has two notes in the scale per string, it's going to go this is the part of my this is part of my chord the second is not the third is part of my chord the fourth is not the fifth is part of my chord the sixth is not and if i keep on going the seventh is part of my chord and so on which means that this naturally gives me my my arpeggio or basically my chord and so and then so that's why it kind of links together so if i was to play this through i can learn this pattern a little bit wonky to play to just learn where my finger goes back to but i think it's actually really useful so it's like okay one two three four five six and then i could keep going seven eight did i do that right <laughs> uh one two So it's a little wonky. I haven't played up here on this shape as much. I've been doing it more on the A. Which I'm really liking. So I should practice down here. Everything is nice and parallel because on these two shapes, this happens to be where the two uh, the, the two shapes are making minor chords. So one way to do it is I can go from this D, one, two, and then the F, three, four, and then five, six, and then I like to go back to my, to play the chord. So there's the chord. So one, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. Six, seven, eight. So it goes one, two, three, four, five, six, six, five, four, three, two, one. All right, the other way I can do it is with my intervals. So I can say, all right, if I look at this shape, then the second is a two note away major second. That's the same, that would be the same under this shape as well as the Dorian shape, which is shape number three, which is uh, this shape right here. And then if I go to the third, instead of going out here to the third like we normally would, we're going to the third back here because of our two note per string rule. So now we've got a three note away minor third. Instead of going out here for it, I'm going back here for it. And then we've got a uh, four note away, we've got a fourth, which is a five note away perfect fourth, which is normal. So that's the same under both shapes. And then we've got a seven note away perfect fifth, which normally I would lean forward like this, my power chord shape. But now because there's two notes per string, we're moving back to my lean back, your G shape 
and from a cage system. And then we've got the, uh, the nine note away major six, the distinctive note in the Dorian, because it's a major instead of a minor. And then we've got then the uh, 10 note away minor seven, which normally I would play like right here, which would be right underneath. But now we're gonna reach all the way back here, which is a bit of a reach. Is that right? And then if I did it in holes and half steps, we've got the, the first of the Dorian is a whole step to the second of the Dorian. And then the second of the Dorian to the third is a half step. Notice I'm going from like pinky to pointer, but I'm going five frets back, which is a half step. So normally it would be, Normally when I go pinky to pointer, it's a whole step to here, but I'm going back here, so that's a half step. So one to two, and then two to three is a half step. Three to four is a whole step. And then four to five is a half step. From five to six is a whole step. From six to seven, which normally I would go here, but instead I'm going back here is a half step. So when I'm looking for the half steps in this one, I'm really looking to see this note. <laughs> That's where it would go. And I could see the half step right there. But then I go back here. And then I can see it as a five note away half step. Okay, so let's go back to our main thing over here and count these ones up. But before we do, I'll do a quick joke here. Let's see my practice session joke. All right. <clears throat> Let's get some coffee. Honestly, if we don't turn this country around, we're all going to end up singing a lullaby. We're all going to end up singing a lullaby. Not in anticipation of a good night's sleep, mind you, the lullaby. Instead saying bye-bye to all the lulls, you know? All the lols, all the all the lols, singing lols a bye bye. You see what I'm saying? Lols a bye bye. We'll be singing lols a bye. Oh man, okay, that's bad. So why? Because 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 at some point the checks are gonna come due, man. And our mouth is writing checks that our butt can't cash. And the 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 government is the big mouth with the pen stuck in it writing checks. In this analogy. In case, in case you weren't following, and the business owners that actually, and the other people, workers, and what that actually, they actually do the work. They're of course the asses of the story, that that are going to have to do the actual work needed to cash those dang checks that the big mouth keeps writing. And honestly, like I, I have a, I have, I happen to have a very unhelpful. Uh, uh, spider sense, you know, like Spider-Man has. I've got a spider sense about these things. And it keeps telling me the country is headed for a financial crisis at some point. We're going to hit the wall at some point. It's inevitable. But there's nothing I, there's nothing I could do about it. So, so I really wish I could turn off the spider sense. You know, it's not very helpful. Because my spider sense, it, my spider sense manifests itself as an annoying itch in my seventh spider leg, which of course is impossible to scratch because it's like my seventh phantom spider leg, which gets this spider sense itch in it all the time. Dang spider sense. Itching, itching over a problem I got no power to help, manifesting itself in my, my phantom seventh spider leg that I have no power to scratch while having a while also having this strange attraction to women who want to want to eat me alive, literally. Why is, why is it that Spider-Man got all the good spider traits, you know? 
and I'm over here dripping sticky spider snot out my nose. It's like, come on, man, this, this sticky spider web stuff is supposed to shoot out of my wrist on command in such a way that I could, I could swing on it and stuff. But my spider snot's just sticky enough. It's just sticky enough not to easily be rubbed out of my pants when it drips on them, which is not, it, I don't, that's not helpful. All right, position five. So we're going to say, first off, how do I know where the D is or where the Dorian of this position is? So if I see this position, I call it position number five. I'm going to say uh, you could also call it then the uh, Mixolydian position, because if I played from the top, I'd be playing in Mixolydian. Uh, you can also call it a A-shaped position, because if I look at the related major, it would be the C, of course. And if I construct a lean forward bar chord from it, it would be an A uh, shape. So that is that. And so then I can say, well, if the top of the top of it is mixolydian, mixolydian is the fifth of the relative major scale. So if I just count up till I get to eight, which is the first, uh, then I'll get to the well. That would get me to the to the major. So I could say if that's the five, six, seven, eight. And then I can say, well, now I'm on the C and I want to get to the Dorian, which is the, the second. So if this is the first, then this is the second. So there's going to be our Dorian. So I can also just, I'd like to kind of look at all these shapes and just kind of be able to know where the position is. The other way I can do it is I can say, well, I know this shape has a box right here. There's the box part of the shape, my house. And so the so I know that where does the where does the Dorian live? It's not in the house bit of the shape because it's a minor mode, but instead it's going to be on the double stop part of the shape, which in this case is outside of this box. So it's the box double stop. It's at the top of uh, the double stop. The other side of it, the octave is going to be down here, and it's going to be in. If this is the double stop box, it's actually at the bottom of the double stop, which looks funny because it's been shifted forward because of the kink in the tuning. With regards to the, the hamburger shape, the Dorian, the second mode, which happens to be a D, which makes me think of the Dorian right now, but if we were to shift it all up, it wouldn't always be a D, right? But it, it happens to be in the hamburger, which is easier to see here. And the pentatonic shape, it encompasses the hamburger top and the bottom bun of the hamburger we only have the 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 bottom bit uh here and then we have the top bit here remembering that these two strings repeat that look that's why it looks like a four string shape and it's only a three string shape because it's a five string instrument plus a repeated e is the way i'm kind of thinking of it lately all right so given that let's go let's go on and say let's just uh let's let's play up from here what if I was to play up from this D so it'd be one two three four five wait a sec one from the D here two three four five six seven eight now if I look at that shape from there notice sometimes it's useful to compare that to to like what if that was on the top string which would be right here on uh, on the 10th. So it would be right here. And what if I was playing a lean back shape? What would the, what shape would I be playing? I would be playing in, this would be the du, 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 shape number two. So it would be shape number two, which sometimes we might call like the E shape because that C, if I played from the, from the major, that C would be our, our E bar chord shape but if i played from the d on that shape then i would have this this lean back this so it would be d one two three four five six six seven eight one two three four five six seven eight so if i can sometimes it's useful to envision that shape and then try to say, okay, then if I can play that same thing is happening from here, that this shape is the same in essence as though it was on the top string playing from the D 
uh, leaning back in basically shape number two. That's not as useful as it would be if it was a lean forward shape, like if it was the first note and I was leaning forward, kind of like we would be here, like if I take this D and do that same exercise and say, what if I took this D? Well, that would be like I was playing on the top string. If I was playing on the top string, that would be like this shape, which would be the Dorian shape, which makes sense. So when I go from this D, that would be like playing my Dorian from the top. And I just have to make sure I'm taking into consideration the kink in the tuning, which is not here this time because it's below. In this case, the shape would repeat up top and then I would continue from there. So sometimes that's a useful way to visualize it. And so then if I'm gonna go from this D, so I'm going from this D, leaning back to position number five. And what do we have in terms of whole steps and half steps? Uh, we've got from the one to the two is a whole step pinky to pointer only four notes away instead of five that's going to be a whole step from uh, the two to the three we get then our half step so in this particular shape we always have the half steps in this box because on this five when we break the guitar into five chunks I never start like in the middle of the box and play forward the box is always within each of these shapes, which means that the half steps always have to be within the box when we break out into these shapes, which is kind of interesting because when we looked at the lean fact and lean forward shapes, sometimes we were starting in the middle of the box and therefore what ended up happening is, is we, we had the breakup happening in the middle of the box, right? So on these shapes, wherever the box is at, that's where the whole steps and half steps are gonna be. So it goes, to two and then so two to three is going to be that half step and then when we go from uh, three to four we've got the whole step and then I won't play it I'll just go and then when I go from four to five we've got a whole step and then when we go from five to six we've got a whole step and then we're back to the box. Now the box looks a little wonky down here because of the shift in the tuning. It's the same box, it's just that the fault line moved it up. So now when I go from six to seven, that's gonna be our half step. So the other thing to note is the two that are removed when I look at my normal pentatonic related to normally the major and minor, it's the Lydian and the Locrian. So that means that if I look at the box, it's always going to be th these two that get removed, the Locrian and the Lydian. So, so, so if I converted this to the five note pentatonic, we'd remove this one. And those are also associated with the half steps because you have one whole step to two and then a half step to the half step is leading into the Lydian. So the, the half step leads into the Lydian and the half step is always going out of the Locrian because that's the related to the, to the major positions where we have uh, the whole steps and half steps on the major positions, which are, which are happening uh, between on the major positions, you can see because of the numbering system here, we have from three to four in the majors, therefore from two to three in Dorian, and we have from uh, six to one or eight or one and the majors because that's what the the mode numbering system is which means from six to seven in the dorian okay so now let's just take a look at our our uh intervals let's first map out all of the intervals from the spot so i'd have uh the two note away major second and then we'll get into more detail in a second we've got then the three note away major third we've got then the four note away perfect fifth four note away perfect fifth we've got the seven note i mean yeah five note away perfect fourth sorry about that five note away perfect fourth and then the seven note away perfect fifth and then the nine note away major six 
And then the 10 node away, minor seven. Hold on a second. And then back to the octave, 12 note away octave. Okay, so that basically builds the shape Let's go through it in more detail and say, okay, let's look at the second. The second of the Dorian is gonna be, I know it's a two note away uh, major second. How do I know that? Because I can say, well, that's gonna be down, one string down would be five, four, three, two, two note away major second. So from here, that's gonna be pinky to pointer. sense the inverse would be 12 minus 2 which would be a 10 note away minor 7 from bottom to top I also know that the second of the Dorian is the Dorian is 2 which is one step away from the relative major position so it's 2 minus 1 plus 2 gives me 3 so it's the th relative third position relative to the major scale which means when I look at the shape I know I can make a minor chord from it because relative to the major, the two, three, six make a minor chord. Beyond that, I know it's the Phrygian, which means it has a distinctive, uh, it has a distinctive second uh, related to it. So, in, so if I see that E and I built a chord around it, notice I'm kind of like in the middle. So there's multiple ways I can build a chord. I can lean forward, and I can say, okay, let me pick up my fifth, copy and paste, and I could say, well, there's. I'm always going to have like a fifth that I need. So one way to find the fifth uh, is right there. And then I need a third. So, so, and I'm on a minor third. So there is a minor third maybe pa back here, but that's t -t 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 there, but that's going to give me right, right. They're on the same string. So I could pick, pick up the third then down here. And that's one way I can play it. That might be like a minor D shape that you might think about it as. Is that right? Wait a sec, where's that, that G? I'm not on the right G. I should be, I, sh I should be back here, I'm on this E. Now I got all mixed up. I'm on this E there and then to here. There we go. Okay. So I can also think about, well, what's above it? If I go above it, there's a fifth above it. And then I just need a, a third. Here's, by the way, it's E, G, B. So I need a, a, a G. And so I could say, well, the third is up this way. If I could start to see that third, it's inverted now. So I can say, all right, well, if this is my my E down here, I can go the fourth, the fifth is above it, and then this is an inverted. I can still think of it as an E like minor, which is interesting. Uh, I can do a lean back shape and say, well, there's my E there's my third, but I can't really get to my fifth because I'm running out of room uh, to lean back. It would be behind the nut. So just a couple things to keep in mind. Now, also just realize that I have the distinctive second, which is the F right there. So, so I can always kind of throw that in. And the only way is I know that is because it's a Phrygian. So the Phrygian has that distinctive second that's still in the related key of the Dorian. All right, let's go to the next one. And we're going to go to the, the third, which is the, so if I was here, the third, which I was fingering on accident, is going to be a three note away, a three note away minor third. How do I know it's three notes away? Because I could say there's five, four, three, three note away minor third. Inverse is 12 uh, minus three, which was the nine note away major six. So from top to bottom, three note away minor third from bottom to top, uh, nine note away major six. Okay, I also know that the third of the Dorian would be two minus one, 
which is one plus three, which is the fourth, that would be the Lydian. So I'm on the Lydian. I also know that the fourth of the relative major would be something that I would build a major chord on because it's the one, four, five to build the major chord. Beyond that, it's the Lydian, which has a distinctive augmented fourth, which I could put into play if I was gonna play off of this uh, one here. And I know that the Lydian lives in the box part of the shape. When I look at the seven note uh, shape and it's at the bottom of the box under the sea looking towards the ocean because it's one of the majors here. It's also the one that would be removed if I go from the seven note shape to the five note pentatonic because the, lo the Locrian up top left and the bottom right Lydian are the ones that would be removed in terms of the barbell hamburger pentatonic shape. I'm currently in the barbell where we have the ends of the barbell that we would play for the five note pentatonic and the middle ones would be removed. That one, which is the Lydian and this one, which would be uh, the Locrian. So, so I know that I would build a major chord off of that, which once, which would look like this. That would be a D shape if I moved it forward, right? Because I've got the one leaning forward to the five and then I need a third, which is gonna be a major third, which is gonna be down here. If I lean it backwards, I've got the one, I've got the three, and then I've got the five. So I can say lean it back, boom, boom, boom. That's basically our little F shape, which is part of this shape, which is part of the full E shaped F bar chord. I can go above it. I can say, okay, let's go above that shape. There's the, there's the fifth. And so I just need like a third now, which is gonna be, I believe this A. So if I'm saying I'm on this F, I can go above it and then reach out to that A. Which you might be able to just bar this off. I, I tend to like to give me, get it so I can get my fingers on it because that allows me to, to like give it some action a little bit more, to mute it a little bit or, you know. But anyways, you've got that. So now let's go to the fourth. So if I go to the fourth, that's going to be of the Dorian. Uh, so that's going to be right underneath. How do I know? Because it's five notes between two strings, five note away, perfect fourth. Inverse 12 minus five, which is seven. So top to bottom, five note away, perfect fourth. Bottom to top, seven note away, perfect fifth. The fourth of the Dorian is two minus one is one plus four. It means it's the fifth of the relative major, which means I'd make a major scale from it because the one, four, five would make a major scale. Beyond that, it's the fifth mode, which is Mixolydian, which has a distinctive uh, minor seven, 10 note away minor seven. So where does it live? In the house analogy, it's not in the house, even though it's a major, because it's the major that's similar to the minor as it's outside, it's in the flat hanging with the D. Uh, and in the hamburger barbell analogy, we're currently in the barbell. It's on the right side of the barbell where the heavy hitters are on the majors, which is the major and the mixolydian. If if I was to make a chord from it, again, I know I can make a major. So the, so one, the way we would, would normally think about making it is leaning forward to like, there's the fifth, right? <laughs> And then I'd say, okay, what do I need? Then I need a third. So that looks like my, that's like the D shape from a cage system. And I can kind of mute the one in between, the string in between. I'm just muting this with my bar. Or you can play, there's the D right there, that D shape. And then if I leaned it back, then you'd have the third right here. And you've got then this one. So if I leaned it back, you'd go boom, boom, boom which once again, you might see as this shape, which is basically a part of the E bar shape. And then, and then you could go above it. So I could say, all right, well, the fifth is above it right there. And then I'm looking for the, the third, which you could find here. You can also find it right here, which again is part of this shape, but I could go, I could go up here and say, okay, there's gonna be boom, boom boom inverted so 
so we have that. And so that's interesting. And then, okay. What else was I? Oh, by the way, it has a distinctive seventh. Where is that seventh? It's right there. There's our 10 note away minor seven. So if I add like the third to that one, and then I replace the fifth with that minor seven, you get that diminishing sound. Notice that if I go if I go up to another like another major chord construction, like that's in the same place like that C. I don't. I have still the third right there, and sorry, I got messed up because of the kink in the tuning. That is in the, that's in the key, but where I'm actually looking for this one, that would be the 10 note away. How is it? How do I know it's 10 notes away? Because it's five and then 10 up here because of the kink in the tuning. Whereas if I go to the C up here, then I don't have that. I don't have this one. It's not in the relative position. If I went up to here, now I could still play it and it might sound good. And I think this is something I'm trying to get in my mind. Like, when could I do that? In the blues situation, you're playing all, you're always adding that like flat seven. So, and I think it sounds good in part because it's parallel. So if I played this, like if I was playing, if I wasn't playing that seven, and then I added the seven over here, then it might sound out of whack. But when I play the seven like this on this side, wait, where am I? I'm over here. Now I got messed up. Where am I? I'm on the G. There it is. And then I do it up here. Ah, messed up. I don't know what I'm getting. I'm, my head is going here. I'm getting a little tired. I'm just going to move on. Let's push through here. We'll get back into that maybe tomorrow. <laughs> Let's go down to the fifth. So we're on the fifth. So that's going to be duh, duh. So the fifth is an is the A. So that's a seven note away. Perfect fifth. How do I know? Because I could say five and then 10, 9, 8, 7. 7 note away, perfect fifth. The inverse, 12 minus 7. 5 note away, perfect fourth. The perfects are inverts of each other. Dang it, I did it again. So there's the perfect fifth. Bottom to top. Uh, 5 note away, perfect fourth. All right. And then where does the... And I know that the fifth of the Dorian is 2 minus 1, which is 1 plus 5 is 6. That would be the Aeolian. I know I'd make a minor chord from it because the two, uh, three, six, I would make a minor chord and because it's the Aeolian. It lives in the house analogy, not in the house because it's the minor. So it's in the double stop box part in this case. And in terms of the five note pentatonic, we're currently at the end of the barbells. All right, I'm just gonna keep flowing through here. Try to finish this up. I think, I'm, I, think I need a nap. I'm, I'm getting a little tired. So we're gonna go to uh the six so the six is going to be a nine note away this is where the distinctive interval is a nine note away major six nine note away major six and how do i know that because it goes five ten nine and uh the inverse is 12 minus nine which would be a a four note away no a three note away minor third so top to bottom Nine note away major six, bottom to top. Uh, three note away minor third. And the six of the Dorian is two minus one is one plus six gives us seven, which means it would be the seventh of the relative major, which means we would make a diminished chord from it, which is the Locrian mode. And then if I go to the seventh, the seventh, we have the 10 note away uh, minor seven, because it's a minor mode. 10 note away minor 7 and that's going to be a a how do I know it's 10 notes away because it's going to be 5 10 and uh, the inverse would be 12 minus 10 which would be 2 so top to bottom 10 note away minor 7 bottom to top 
to note away major second and the seventh of the Dorian is, ten, is two minus one is one plus seven is eight minus only seven modes gives us the first of the relative major which means we're going to make a major chord from it because the one three five are majors beyond that it's the Ionian mode which has all the intervals related to the major scale or Ionian mode uh, and where does it live? It's in the house, in the house analogy, which I can see here, top left penthouse. It's shifted up here because of the kink in the tuning, but we still see it on the top, I'm sorry, the top right of the house. And uh, so there's where it is. So let's keep it at that. I think I'm going to have to stop here. Let's stop it here.